Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's good to see all of you here today. The liturgy of the church is beautiful and meaningful. Year after year, we do the same thing because that's what we Catholics love to do, the same thing. We don't like change. <laughs> the Mass is the same because Christ is always the same. And the same is true for our sacred scriptures. The Word of God is alive, written thousands of years ago. The Holy Scriptures speak to us year by year. Same readings, same inspired words. Christ is the same, but we are different. The readings that we use for this Mass are those of the Christmas Mass at night. We started the Mass as we normally do, opening song, initial rites, penitential rites, gloria, the opening prayer or collect. And then our reader came forward and broke open the liturgy of the words of the word with the following words from prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shown. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. I do not think there could be more appropriate words to describe what we have gone through in this year 2020. This year has been a year of darkness and the whole world has become a land of gloom. When Isaiah the prophet said these words 2,700 years ago, he was referring to the reality of Jerusalem of the time, the invasion of the kingdom of Assyria that devastated the northern kingdom of Israel and that was making plans to invade the city of Jerusalem and destroy it. It was a time of darkness and the land was a land of gloom. When Christians of the first century read that same passage of prophet Isaiah, they made these words their own. They were dealing with a different invasion. It was the Roman Empire this time that had conquered the entire known world, not only with its army, but also with its worldly and sinful cultural influence. It was a time of darkness, and the land was a land of gloom. As we celebrate Christmas this year, for those of us who are here in church and for those who are celebrating Christmas at home, we experience the invasion of a virus that has taken over the whole world. And while some have gotten sick with it, even those who have not been infected by it are suffering the consequences of a global pandemic. It is a time of darkness, and if we turn on the news, the whole world seems a land of gloom. In the second reading, we hear from St. Paul writing to Titus, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age. Training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires. This year, every comfort that defines the American dream has been taken away from us. The many idols that we normally worship have been crushed, and we realize that we don't need them. We have come to understand how vulnerable we are we don't need those other gods who are no gods. All we need is our faith in the one and true God, the love of our families, and good health. That's it. Everything else is non-essential. This pandemic has trained us to reject godless ways and worldly desires. We have discovered the things that truly matter, or so I hope. 
In the reading of the story of Christmas, clear exaggerations come to the surface. We are told that the census was ordered by the emperor that the whole world should be enrolled. The whole world. Clearly, this whole world is hyperbole. Or is it? This year, we had a census here in the United States, actually. And the pandemic has literally affected the whole world. You can't make this stuff up. We have been told to stay home, to save lives. And for a time, that strategy had been helpful. Some people have made of their homes a more enjoyable place, not only for living, but also for work. Some others only rely on the extension of eviction forgiveness for a little longer so that they can have a roof over their heads. In general, we all have spent a lot of time at home. A lot. Hopefully, some have been able to accomplish those projects for which they never had time for in a normal year. We have stayed at home a lot. And yet, when the Savior of the world came to us, he could not stay at home to save lives because he had no home. The Gospel of Luke tells us, while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. He had no home, but he is still saved lives. He saves you. He saves me. He is our Savior. When Jesus came to the world, he could not stay home to save lives because he had no home to begin with. His crib was a manger, and yet without home, he has still saved our lives. It is him who we adore this Christmas. He truly is the light in the midst of this darkness. If we go back to the first reading, Isaiah didn't end this prophecy in doom and gloom. For he says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. For a child is born to us, a song is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. And they name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. And in the Gospel, we also hear that the birth of this Messiah is indeed good news. The angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So my dear brothers and sisters, I bring you those same good news that are for the whole world, that in Bethlehem of Judea, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and Lord was born. He is joy in this world of sadness. He is hope in a world of despair. He is the Lord of Lords, our Savior. To him on this Christmas night be all glory and honor and praise and worship forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>